page. Is this still on BW.com? On what? Is this still on Paranormal Warehouse? Yeah, yeah. but I'm sharing the link to the brew. Okay. Excuse me. So that's what I'm going to do right now. Well, so it looks like I'm not paying attention, but I really am. <laughs> <laughs> so what's going on? So you guys are just twi twins for our Halloween special. We can be the twins. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> you have a twin. He's just not around. I mean, James probably has to put a little bit more hair under his nose. Other than that, yeah, I think you guys nailed it. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm gonna like it. Yeah, look, sort of, sort of. You can be my daddy. Yeah. You want to be daddy? <laughs> so it's like we're having our little Halloween. If you guys saw the description, I said paranormal brew and duo demonology, uh, power hour Halloween potty. <laughs> yeah, that's what you want to talk about. You want to talk about Halloween. What no, it means it's, to us? What does like, mean to us? What its origins are or were? What what is Halloween really? It's Halloween is a state of mind now because <laughs> Well, I'm sure it's ubiquitous, but the governor of Rhode Island says we are not to have any Halloween parties. And, really? And You're not? No, no You're trick not or treat. Have a Halloween party? No, and the children cannot trick or treat at night. They have to go out in the daytime. No. Why? Well, Halloween only, is on a Saturday. It was only prevalent at the nighttime, not the daytime. Well, that Halloween is something about evening, all Hallows Eve. That's mm -hmm. what I but I mean I know she's doing her best and what yeah she didn't cancel it they still can trick or treat most some states canceled it so uh, you know I don't stay out of political nature of it and I know the unsafety of some others but yeah. you know you can't ruin a child's ability to wear a mask and costume and have fun and yeah. still buy by social well, media. I think you can put a you can put a dent in it so I don't let him go out. <laughs> So she is though, just not at night. Like, like I don't take my kid at night. I take my kid when it's um, starting yeah. to come evening. You know, like just on the the brink of it. So, yeah, you know? yeah, like just as it's you know as it's about to get dark, and then you just go home. You order pizza and you go through your candy. Yeah. You're like, he's like, Dad, this isn't what I want. You can have it, and it's all the good shit. And then he keeps all the gross stuff, and you're like, good. <laughs> that kid eats anything though. He's just like a garbage disposal like me. That's I, like awesome. the, I like the garbage candy. Like I always took the black stuff. Yeah, <laughs> from Adelaide, Australia. Where are we gonna hide from Adelaide, Australia? Yeah. Right. yeah. Hey, do they celebrate Halloween? Like oh everywhere? Or is it just the United I, States? Thing? I think so. It's all Hallows Eve. They celebrated in Great Britain, so, mm -hmm. so possibly Australia. It's just a, a day later, you know? Yeah. Well, if I... H. I would go trick-or-treating. Yeah. I still, I would. You would. Definitely. Definitely, hell yeah. I, I'm taking my son. He is a Ghostbuster, and um, we're, we're definitely going. You know, we'll, of course, take the precautions, but I'm going. I'm getting all that candy. <laughs> Right, that's what I want. Is that what he's gonna be a Ghostbuster? Yeah, that's what he chose. He's a Ghostbuster. Oh, he's a, he's a Ghostbuster costume. He sleeps in it. He, he does. Yeah, he, he's it. in love. And I didn't, I didn't uh, make that impression on him. He, out of all the things that were not screw Halloween store, he uh, drew to being a Ghostbuster. And he just watched the movie for the first time that day. So, and he wanted to be a Ghostbuster before even the movie. So, oh, good. <laughs> Nice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, when my, when I had my, I was babysitting my niece and she was like s seven years old and she looks at me and she goes, NTT, can we watch the original Ghostbusters? And I said, oh my God. I was like, I was like, you are going to be my number one niece for the rest of your life. <laughs> yeah, he loves it. He loves Slimer. He, I, I bought him slime uh, that has oh, slime on it and I uh, loved it. So, yeah. So, so you guys are twins tonight. I love it. Twinning. And me and Sabrina, Sabrina's got her Twinning. pumpkin shirt. I got, I got my brew. Oh, the brew shirt with my cool pants. <laughs> <Love it. laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> so those what, are pajamas. Were, yeah, were you would you say bootalicious bootalicious pants? Bootalicious, there you go. <laughs> that's, that's what we should put on there. <laughs> So you guys are busy tonight. You're not just here. You're doing yeah, a show we, right we, after we, ours. We should have dressed up in costumes. We should have uh, yeah. it early. Well, this is kind of a break for you because this is a shoot the shit type of, uh, yeah. you know, uh, episode where you don't have to, you know, go diving in deep to quite crazy <laughs> questions. <laughs> yes. As I said, maybe some people wouldn't even listen to us anyway. Who <laughs> right. So, yeah. Well, I, I don't know if I wanted to dress up anyway because this is my last year of being handsome. And I can't it's not shit being handsome. I can't keep it going anymore. It's dwindled as it is. You know, it's a speck of what it used to be. And well, now, it does take you a while to come to the set of the brew, and you know, when we do our monthly things, like you know, we really wait for you. No, that's right. You see my change month to month. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so what are you guys after this? What show are you going to be on? Uh, we're on booze and booze. You've been oh, it's kind of paranormal brew, then booze and booze, and yeah. then the midnight show tonight oh, from one. midnight to two a.m. is spaced out radio. So after you drink all those brews, you're spaced out. There you go. Yeah, that's why we, you know, they're they're, they're from far away. See, we could potentially visit you folks, but these these guys, yeah, I don't know. Where are here. they at? Uh, Western Can Canada. Oh, oh wow. wow! So that's why it's twelve a.m. time because it's actually nine nine their time. Well, yeah, you know, like so. it'd be far enough away if it was Northern Canada. But then again, we're not super far from Maine, and Maine is right on you know Canada is right on top of Maine. Yeah, yeah. But this <laughs> Western, like you know, there, like Vancouver, you know. Area. So, are you guys going on there for any specific reason, or you just do what we do? They say like, they need us. We have to solve some problems for them, you know. No, we have to resolve issues for them. No, it's a demonology show. It's a, it's it's a, a demonology special they're doing. Uh, I think they do it. Uh, this is the first time or second time they've ever done it on Space Top Radio. And they uh, asked us to be on. So, so what do you guys do when you're on? Like, so what did what happened the first time? Are you gonna like? Like, what do people like just call in, ask questions? Do you guys, is it like yeah, a class type of thing? Or? It's the usual format, but I think, you know, Spaced Out Radio is the equivalent of Coast to Coast in America. So yeah. Spaced Out is like the Coast to Coast in Canada. Mm -hmm. I believe how Coast to Coast usually, they have their callers, they, you know, it's a two hour program. Um, so it'll be 2, 2 a.m. Oh um, my God, two hour yeah. program? Uh, yeah, two hours, and I gotta wake up at work for four AM still. So we're yeah, not really gonna do that. Yeah, he was game plan. He's gonna get up at four. I have to, man. To work. I, gotta be, I gotta babysit. I'm the babysitter. The babysitter. So, so, so you go. So you see, you go on there, and people just you just ask you guys questions about technology. So we don't even know. It could be. It, it could be um, anything. They could ask us to be like. Dressing up on camera? Who knows? I hope not. Well, then I gotta tune in. <laughs> well, Twelve a.m. Because you, you, you didn't technically dress up for our Halloween party. I should have. Yeah, I should have. Yeah. Next, uh, ne next Halloween edition, you guys have us on next Halloween again. Um, Actually, we'll this is your idea, Halloween edition. <laughs> Yeah, maybe I'll just dress up for well, next one. It'll be really smart. Do you have a white sheet in your car? Maybe we can be both <laughs> I, I don't know. This is a pretty conservative area. I don't, I don't know if we want to wear cut eye holes and a white sheet around. Yeah, actually, no. Yeah, this is Rhode yeah, Island, not this area. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, they might get the wrong ideas. Yeah, you know. Yeah. So this radio station, is it like um, all talk radio type of station, or do they play music? Uh like, oh, I don't even know, James. Do you know how uh, it's the Canadian one? I don't really know much about Space Out Radio besides like their viewership counts and like uh, I think a lot of their programs are paranormal. So it's like Paranormal Warehouse, but um, not to say anything bad about because the Paranormal Warehouse is big, but much bigger. Like the, to the right, the coast to coast. So what it, the form of coast to coast is format is what Space Out usually does. Mm -hmm. I right. never heard of them. What you heard? Yeah. What? Space, Space out or Coast to Coast? Yeah. I used is to it always on that time? 
Never heard of them. They're Canadian. Oh, well, that's why. Yeah, it's from Canada. <laughs> yeah, that's why. We wouldn't. Um, they're on all the time. Usually, they do shows all day, but uh, the program that we're going to be on, just like how you guys have your program, um, we're just going to be on at midnight. So. That's awesome. Coast to Coast well, is late, like, too. Coast to Coast is freaking yeah, they go up 10 to uh, 11 or something yeah. like that 10 to 11 sometimes maybe. midnight too yeah they've been known to prolong this yeah. um really quick yeah i just want you guys to see this message may need you guys help again if you know what i mean okay yes yeah, yeah. so a lot closer to beth, that you know what? beth got did you get married Who? oh beth okay it's yeah. beth yeah, she, she reached out to me and uh, I, I said, I asked her what she needed, you know, and, you know, of course, we're always there, but you also know what we're going to tell you, too. You know, have you been following the guidance we've been yeah. giving you uh, in the past? And if you have That's not, real, then, yeah. you know, maybe so, so for people that don't know, I mean, I just want you guys to quickly just say, like, what you guys do. You know what I mean? Like, for people that are watching and are like, what do we, who are these yeah, guys? Going on here? <laughs> Sorry, Beth. I'll, I'll talk to you later. Yeah, and then, well, and then we'll get back to you know what I mean. I just want people to because we're you're talking you're about doing. helping and everything. You know, I just want them to know. A lot of things we are here to consult. Basically, uh, we will offer um, our opinion, sometimes advice if it's solicited, and you know, based on our own experience. But we are intercessors as well. In other words, we don't just publish papers and write books. We will uh, intervene, maybe even be on the scene if needed. Uh, you know, we will face down the evil influences and look them in their metaphysical eye and try to get them to back off. So a demonology, what's my definition of demonology? I yeah. think I can remember. Demonology is the systematic study of the lore and cultural traditions of wicked spirits. So a demonologist can be someone who just is, you know, does that in a capacity of literature, you know, and research. But we are applied demonologists, so we'll actually go out into the field and address these situations. You know, because sometimes an intervention in person is more effective because you get to know the person, the subject better. Yep. So. And, and the reason that we're named duo demonology is because of duo two, and demonology is the old English form of demonology, of course, incorporated by King James in 1616, um, around there. And uh, we, we follow that formula because uh, that was the conception of demonology in modern, uh, modern civilization or civilization. So um, we kind of bring the past into the uh, future, or the present, and, of course, take those uh, traditions. And we are trying to implement a scientific basis of what is comprehensible by people and science and of course what has been proven fact and what has not been we we try to assess up to natural causes before we jump to the pre-natural um so do it analogy is uh that of course we have our manager and historian uh, alicia Marco carlson who works with us uh, she handles our bookings but she also handles the historical aspects of it because once again she actually is a president of the johnson historical society so she handles all our history-based uh, situations when it comes to locations or people. Um, and without her, you know, uh, uh, there wouldn't be no blue. Yeah, she's that cohesive factor yeah. in duo demonology. So sometimes we affectionately call this trio demonology. Yeah, yeah. in joking yeah, yeah. So we've got a high-caliber team, I think. Mm -hmm. Well, remember, I thought she was like a fan. A crazy star. <laughs> <laughs> this woman who won't stop getting on the chat about it. Who keeps coming on and doing our introduction, you know, like we don't ask her to, but she's just there. Yeah. <laughs> you know, does the intro. Yeah. The guys I was like, I was like, oh my gosh, I was like, this girl's so cute. Look at how much she loves them. She's like, like supporting them. <laughs> I was like loving it. It was awesome. Have you, have you seen Elise? She's no, seen, no, not yet. Person. Oh I'll tell you, uh, an old movie. Have you seen? My cousin Vinny with Joe Pesci. Yes. Marissa, <laughs> Marissa. Now, Elise is quite educated. She has a um, she has a BS in criminal justice and you know all kinds of this and that. And you know she she's an excellent researcher and genealogist. She's a cemetery conservator, so she's used to digging into records. But um, it's still fun. yeah, if you see, but so she's a smart cookie. But if you see Marissa Tomé, you know, playing uh, Mona Lisa Vito in My Cousin Vinny, that's Elise. 
But the bay, very pretty, very pretty brunette. And uh, you look she at her, pretty. and she has this North Providence accent, North Providence. Oh, wow. So if you've seen my cousin, Betty, you get a good, darn good impression. Knows about <laughs> yeah, listen, hard. one of these, one of these episodes, she's got to come on with you guys. Oh, yeah. you love her. No, yeah. she, you just like her for some reason. Yeah. She has a little sprinkling of haters, but that shows you're making. Yeah. <laughs> you got an opinion. You said something at one time. I I think we all have. I think we all have haters. So yeah, yeah. definitely do. Yeah. Yes, I I Very glad to come to you tonight. You know, the guys are here for you. They're not here every week, but they are here for you. Just, you know. <laughs> She just oh, said, that. "Well, that's a North Providence, uh, Johnston, <laughs> you know, so, uh, Rhode Island." So, uh, so do you? I, so do you? Uh, Got to brag about it. You brag. said something earlier about in person. Do you do stuff via? I mean, is it because of COVID? Um, so there's a couple questions. But do you do things via like the web, like? Through Zoom or Facebook Live? You know, more, you know what a more crucial and cogent factor is finances. We can't get in our van, pack pack our equipment, and just head out there like right. television programs. And people often assume we can do that. Well, I have a term for that. It's called paranormal paramedics. <laughs> this is what we do professionally. It's what we train to do. So they say they have an emergency situation. We'll be with a flasher on. We'll be uh, out to see them. And we just, you know, it's finances that are more restrictive. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, yeah. of course, we're concerned with, you know, COVID precautions and all. But, right. right. No, it's really, we can't just be there a lot. We yeah. will if we can. But we do physically get involved. You know, I have many times traveled um, yes, yes. out of my own pocket, like to like oh, Arkansas. Yes. So I did 22 hours to Arkansas one time a few years ago. Um, I did that. that. And uh, we do do things physically. Um, usually a lot of the times it's either uh, clients or homeowners um, or uh, investigation teams reaching out to us. Usually most of the time our uh, ability of being involved is consultation and usually that can be done through either physical process uh email or now of course with uh covid through skype zoom or stream yeah or, one of the platforms um, we can get you know virtually be with them it's you know live yeah. inter interaction yeah so we, we 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 come up we try to come up with a solution the best way we can you know we of course like would to be physically involved in most situations but a lot of the cases uh, that come to us, uh, we determine just based upon a lot of the situations we dealt with beforehand or talking to the client where we can either solve them by talking to them or we feel like to the, to the nature it's not demonic or not really negative and we right. give them guidance and some feedback. And most of the time they do listen to us and that's really where it ends. But there's the course of times where they listen to it you know, the feedback and the guidance. And then that's when we necessarily get involved. But um, for me as being a clergy, I'm more necessarily involved maybe than Carl would be, especially if they want a house blessing or they want a uh, you know, prayer of healing over themselves. But Carl would definitely be there with me as well. But sometimes I do it without him because of yeah. the church services. You know, I, I'm a deacon. So I have performed house blessings, but I prefer someone of James's uh, experience right. there to be there. Because he has a system to go through, and I'd rather you know, like, you know, climb the yeah. rungs with him. And uh, I'm much more comfortable assisting. I don't always like it to be the Carl show where I'm out yeah. there, dead, 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 you know. And, <laughs> well, that's that's my brother's impression of me. Right, right, yeah, you know, right, you know. It's like me, 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 me. I could, I could, I, I would like to visualizing like um a virtual Zoom exorcism like pulling out the right and just like you know you're doing that just screen <laughs> holy water looking down the screen james would yeah. jump out a window that's something we don't do you know there there was a, i know i know i'm just like visualizing no, yeah unless you really want us to comic going over my head they did, uh, there was a group, an organization out there, that, you know, crock of shit. Yeah. Uh, but there was a group out uh, a few, quite a few years ago. A lot of people don't remember them because unless you were really involved in demonology or 
being involved with like Sabrina, like yourself, you know, being part of like Sanctuary back in the day and being a part of these uh, teams that assisted homeowners. There was a group called Demon Doctors, two individuals that used to do Skype readings on people's houses and do Skype exorcisms, and they charge you a nice lofty fee of a thousand dollars. Oh wow! Yeah. People, people were paying. I don't remember the name, but I remember of it. Yes, mm -hmm. people were paying. And this was this was like before COVID, so Wait, yeah. this is like years ago. This is like. Yeah. Eight plus years ago, well, yeah. you know, you couldn't prove that they didn't succeed, you know. Yes, like you was because you have a very tenacious demon there. But this thing is going, it's in your house, you can't see it, but it's going, you're being free. Next five hundred dollars because you already paid a thousand dollars. People will come back and help you, it'll only be an extra five hundred dollars. Oh, my goodness, wow. My That's girlfriend, a, um, my girlfriend at, at work, she was, uh, there is across the street, there is like a tarot card reader mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, she's starting to get into the crystals and started getting into, you know, certain things. And she's like, I, I made this appointment across the street with the tarot card. I said, hold up, stop right there. I was like, you don't know how many cases we deal with from people, you know, with the, the, the big tarot card out their door and then they reel you in and they say this is something wrong with you and blah 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 and then they take your money and then they want to come to your house and do a blessing and they just rip you off and she's like oh, all right so she wanted to go and cancel her appointment so she goes over there today and she's like i'm going to cancel my appointment and she's like but i've sensed this negative energy around you and you need and she's like wait a minute you're not permitted to get in my head or, you know, in, in me right now. So what are you talking about? So she kind of like played this back at her yeah. she oh, came good. Back to me and she's like, you were friggin' right. She tried to get in my head and saying that there's all this that she could take away from me just because I was canceling an appointment with her. Mm -hmm. I was like, well, it looks like we're going to have to, you know, like hose you down or something because you know, you're, <laughs> She's going to come right at you. You know, I mean, I'm not, I'm not scaring her. She knows all the things that yeah. I do. We talk about all this all the time. But it's just like what we're talking about. Some of these people try to reel you in yeah. and take your money from you and tell you everything around you is like wrong and negative and your whole world's going to fall apart. So, uh, hey. yeah. Oh, hi, Jody. <laughs> I know. Hey, hi, hi, Jody. Hey. But, uh, Proved her point. I proved her point from this. Uh, uh, what what she should have known. You know what I mean by uh, trying to make well, an appointment. Well, not and not, to not implicate every tarot card reader out there. No, no. But, but, you know, there, there are some. Tarot you would have seen the, the front, the storefront. You would you would have said, okay, stay away. You know. Um, <laughs> there'll be some tarot card readers out there that will uh, initially tell you up front that this reading could be changed with you. Yeah. So, you know, they're, they're, they're only readings based upon what you are at right now. If I walk out the other door, that whole reading changes because you're, you're, you're out of all, your own will. You're changing yeah. your destiny in some form or fashion. So there are good tarot, reader, uh, tarot readers out there that will tell you these things. But like you said, there are quite a few people, yeah. out, unfortunately, <laughs> that will just milk. Mil as much as they can out of these people. I dealt with the case. Oh, yeah. I know. Maybe it's the same one. What, what with case? T. Johnson. Yes. Oh, yeah, um, that's exactly what I was thinking. In Rhode Island. Yeah. She paid, I think, over $50,000 $50, yes. on shamans. 50000 on shamans, readers, um, uh, yeah. angel therapy healers, because somebody implant, implanted in her head that mm -hmm. she had this evil for. You remember that? Yeah. Gee, and a lot of the negative cases, that's the whole point. A lot of the negative cases that we come across are uh, from people who are uh, pretending or think that they could, you know, take care of these people through, you know, readers. You know, and my brother, pull those thousands of dollars from them. Yes, because they know who will, you know, they can build. My mm -hmm. brother approached that case very sincerely, never asked for money. They never offered him gas money. They never. I, I asked them about this. They never offered him a soda or a water. Or wow. hmm. See, James and I, we don't want your money. We want your cookies. You know, and, and water. <laughs> no. Well, I went to an investigation one time, and the people are like, 
we get there and there's just this spread all over the table. Like, oh, you know, like cheeses and crackers and like coffee and donuts and cookies. I was like, Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I was to across that. It's yeah. never in Brooklyn, New York, was it? Because I had clients when I was a member of TAPS, the Atlantic Paranormal Society. I was a case manager for a, a situation in Brooklyn, New York, and it's taking place in a three story brownstone house. And uh, they they had just what you described. They had it all set out first. So, you, you know, you're dealing with individuals. You never know what reception you're going to get, right. how appreciative they may be. But, you know, but the same woman who didn't offer my brother gas money or anything, you know, and her husband, uh, then this other woman comes in and says, I can cure you. So she got the $50,000 from them. Oh. You know, the segments, it's like, you know, 5,000 here, 5,000 there. Right. But she did rack it up because she stayed with them over a year. Yeah. It's just, that's <laughs> such a shame. Yeah. And we, and of course I went in with Keith and uh, a few members of, uh, I believe the Dominion ministry at that point, this is how long ago it was. And uh, we went in there for free, you know, and she treated us like, oh, well, at least the husband did treat us like crap. And, yes, uh, that's the husband, very uh, honorary guy. Uh, and we even brought, uh, we even brought the director of psychology of Roger Williams uh, University with us, like the director of psychology, like, wow. <laughs> like of that psychology program. And they even treated her like shit. So oh, it's, wow. it's, it's, like we went in there for free at the kindness of our heart to uh, attempt, but because they didn't like what we were telling them, they wanted, right. they wanted somebody else. They wanted somebody else, and then well, they, they, they got this. They got charged fifty thousand dollars before we were involved, but still, in that same token, like we were like we want nothing, but like right. we're, we're the assholes, you know? Yeah, you know why? And and I'm probably gonna sound a little cliche here, but it's probably because. That side of it probably, you know, knows that you would make a difference, yeah. you know, and, uh, you know, change it. And it just is preventing you from doing that. Unfortunately, I also think there were psychological issues that were more yeah. ramifications of it. But there, we can't deny that there wasn't something there. Like, there right. definitely, was, definitely there wasn't. Yeah. There was definitely atmospheric change. Keith, uh, Carl's brother, felt like there was something uh, uh, of some sort of phenomenon there. So, I would agree with Keith on that. Keith and Carl have done this far longer than I have. So, you know, I, I take their point of view very, 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 very seriously. So, like, that's many varies. And um, it, I, did, I, I respected Keith's opinion on it. And I felt the same thing, that there was atmospheric change. There was change in personalities. Of course, that could have been psychological. But there was also small spurts of activity that would occur there that have been caught on devices so you can't right. you can't really n negate and say and neglect and say that this person wasn't dealing with something right you know and it also could be the the energy that's yeah. just been stirring up you know for so yeah. long inside yeah. the house in the environment you know with everybody you know um but i do have a question james and and and, and as much as you can say without breaking that confidentiality code of helping a client um, what would, what would make you get in your car and drive 22 hours to a case? Like what, like what would have to be like the severity level of something uh, like that? In, in that case, there was children involved. Um, a child, and I wasn't even a parent back then, but, um, something about children have always, especially with my childhood trauma, you know, ch children have always been a soft spot in my heart. Not being a father, like if a kid was involved, it, it'd be like, I'd somehow find a helicopter or, or take one to to get a far distance. Uh, but no, it was, there were children involved and um, it was a member of mine's close friend. And so there's a, a bunch of things. And to, to be honest, I wouldn't necessarily call that uh, case demonic. Some people would, maybe it was very close. So it's, it's, it's one of the few that I still question to this day. It's actually one of the few um, that still boggle my mind. And I believe within that case and, and in the longevity of um, the ride and the involvement physically in that location, I think that was the only, only time I also had an angelic experience in my life as well in that case. That's awesome. So that it, there, there was a reason that I went 22 hours. Um, usually I would never. And, uh, but because there's people that could deal with that much closer. And there was 
Um, you know, at that point in time, you know, uh, Jeremy Leonard was part of the Dominion Ministry and I was running it. Jeremy Leonard, who was out in Louisiana, actually met us there. So there could have been people that were involved closely. Uh, Rich Valdez out of Florida, um, uh, certain people that were closer, but it, it was just a severity. There was a uh, connection to the member's friend um, and and there being children and they, they felt comfortable talking to us. It was not like we just went there overnight. We were in talks with these people for weeks, not if not months, before we deliberated and said that we're going to uh, take the drive to Arkansas. But um, it, it really transpired fast because of the children. And, you know, I, I feel like we did help. And, um, you know, it was very, it was a very crazy case. But yeah, children probably number one. Yeah. Yeah, I would. So it's so. I, so my one question was going to be, you know, like for, you know, just um, Casper investigations, if you will, um, if it's somewhere too far, you know, you can reach out to a group and just say, hey, can you take this case? You know what I mean? Like, I'm, I'm assuming with this sort of scenario, number one, kids also, but anybody, you know, you want to be able to I mean, I don't think there's that many uh, groups or people out there in that situation that you would like trust 100% to take care of something. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's, I, I imagine well, it's a lot harder. You know, I know it's a defunct unit now and uh, you know, that's partly to blame from my uh, separation from it. But you know, of course I had to with the, to, to be a part of the Catholic church, but you know, the Dominion ministry, we covered about four five states, if not uh, less than that. Like I think, I think the total tally was 35 states, to be honest with you. So 35 states we covered with the mini ministry through affiliates or through actual membership. And we had, we had long reaches. I could have possibly got somebody there. Like I said, I did. I got Jeremy Leonard to join us on that, on that case. Right. But in that same token, I just, there was such, there was something in me saying that I needed to be involved in that and be there for that case. And, um, I think I was meant to like the, with the circumstances that occurred from it. Uh, I think there was, uh, those are experiences that I needed to be involved in. Uh, either if it was uh, a divine intervention or a, a divine guidance or whichever some people want to call it. Um, there was some reason that I was involved with that case and uh, it was very eye opening. Well, was it successful? Was it resolved? Um, it doesn't have to be a perfect. Yeah, it, was, it was resolved. It was, yeah. re it was resolved. Yes. It, it wasn't after that, after that physical uh, um, involvement, it wasn't resolved, but after some consultation and working yes. on this person and uh, helping them guide in a positive mindset, because you have to retrain a person uh, to, right. to, to escape from being in fear in their own home and um, you know, putting that negative uh, in, uh, energy interaction within their confines of their home. So sometimes it takes, of course, nurturing afterwards and, after much nurturing and after much guidance, then it was resolved. Mm -hmm. Good, because of those That's things, good. they aren't fixed so, overnight. No, they're not. So do you uh, handle cases with children differently than if it was just adults? Uh, yeah. I do, but to give Carl some uh, feedback in this, because he one of his prolific possession cases was a child. Yes, it was an uh, adolescent on the threshold of adolescence. So you had the multiple factors in this situation to which James is referring of uh, child psychology, adolescent angst, and the paranormal all coming over to make uh, a psychic battery. And it was a horrific case. It was a genuine case of demonic possession. So, and uh, that was when I was very young and new in my career. That was when I was first being referred to as a demonologist. And uh, yeah, it was a case that transpired in Providence, Rhode Island, and it had all the hallmarks of demonic possession. But I kept in mind the subject was a 14-year-old boy, so he's uh, he's going through a transitional stage, establishing his own sense of self, his own identity, and uh, it was resolved successfully. This was a, a success, a happy ending to it. And I was surprised. Because I, I thought it was probably this harm. But I gave it my all. I was uh, fortunately called into this. And it was a situation where I really didn't know if I could stick with it. You know, I was, when things were going really freaky and there was pronounced phenomena, 
<laughs> what I wanted to do is I wanted to get back out to my car parked outside, go back to my parents' house in situate, down in situate. I knew there was supposed to be a refrigerator. Just go, go back and chill. You know, why am I here? I'm not an expert. I mean, how can I know about this? Uh, but I stood my ground. I gave it my all. And I was going here for it because if I had left, if I had fled that scene, which I, I wanted to flee a few times, I said, how am I ever going to go back to it again? Because what was so unnerving about that was the element of the unexpected. You didn't know what was going to happen minute to minute, you know, even second to second. So I said, I've got to stick this out. I just don't feel right about it. It feels unwholesome. These people are relying on me to do something I don't think I can really do. But if I leave now, it's not going to inspire confidence in these folks that I'm here to help, purportedly to help. And I'll never be able to go back to it because I'll be uneasy. I'll be frightened. I won't know what's happening. And it was unnerving to see this boy being tossed about a room as if hands were flinging him. Like, I mean, he was levitating. He was being thrown around and banging against walls. It just, I initially thought it's probably a case of what was then called, you know, uh, multiple personality disorder and uh, epilepsy, maybe, but because he was being taken over by an invading presence. Mm -hmm. uh, but to watch this scene unfold, it, was, it wasn't that. It wasn't just you know, epileptic seizures. He was, he was being taken over. His face triangulated, distorted. And it looked like his gums receded when this personality would take over. He was just fierce looking. It was like looking into the face of hell. And to look at something like that, I've never personally encountered. To see those wild eyes, not knowing if he's going to leap at me, which he did. You know, I say, I don't know why I'm here. Why do these people put confidence in me? They think I'm some kind of paranormal expert, you know. But it was a learning process. It was part of my experience. Outwardly, I looked like I was in control, you know. And I learned to say to him, I learned when these, this thing took over him, I learned to say, stop. You know, when he was approaching me, stop, say it with authority. And the spirit commanded uh, the personality that was taken over him. Uh, I am convinced there were elements of the preternatural there. He's, he couldn't have done the things he did just with just uh, like, you can't explain it away by a disorder or a seizure, you know. But this was part of his development, too. And what a scene it was. I cannot describe the feeling I got. To see, I stayed overnight the first night I was invited to, to observe him. And it was around 1 a.m. I'm reclining on a sofa, a sofa, and I was awoken by an ear splitting scream. It was the boy. He sounded like he was being flayed alive. This, this, like it, an unearthly scream, a shriek. So I fumbled for the wall switch and turned on the overhead light just in time to see his bedroom door swing open on its own. That was freaking enough. But then he's tossed out of his room and his body was spinning around on the floor, you know, like a pinwheel. He's spinning around, careening off the walls. And then he performed like a, a backwards flip and landed on the couch where I, I had been reclining. And his deep hellish laughter came out of his throat. And that's when he, his, he was wild looking. And then, he turns to me like he, he all of a sudden he looks at me with his pupils are little dots and he looks at me and jumps jumps on me. Now it was my normal two hundred pounds, so I'm holding him down. He pushed me right off, you know. So mm. then he came to himself, and if I needed any more convincing that this wasn't just a thing of the mind, he was. Uh, he started to cry in a panic and calling for his uncle, you know. So it was the next week that we performed. An expulsion, which is like a minor form of exorcism, driving out the invading spirit. So that was arranged and for a week after. And that was a, a bizarre scene. I, if I told you everything that happened there, I don't know if you'd believe me. Mm. Things that happened. But that's so that was my uh, initiation into demonology. But yeah, so but you would handle uh, in, in that long story from Carl, uh, you would handle children differently than an adult, uh, of course, because they're adolescents. I had that in mind at all yeah. the time because, yeah. you know, when I was restraining him, I, of course, I didn't want, I had no choice but to, but I didn't want to injure him and I didn't want him injuring me, you know, so, and plus I was understanding of him. I'm not going to say, you know, I cast you out, unclean spirit, you know, <laughs> depart from this place. I, I walked up to him and when he approached me, I would say, stop, 
and he could see the caring in my eyes. I'm sure that got through to the boy itself. And, uh, you know, I was not reasoning with him, but soothing him in a way. You know, I, I wasn't just going to, like, that's probably what I was supposed to do is yell, scream and yell, tell the spirit to depart. But I showed him he was cared for because of his age, because he was traumatized, because yeah. he was going through this transition. So, But it was successfully resolved to my uh, gratitude and my surprise. Yeah. Your story is very emotional. I could actually feel it and yeah. visualize the entire thing. And I live it when I tell that, yes. Mm -hmm. And it's no real... So that's as succinct as I can tell it. You know, that's the short mm. version. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of a lot of those that mic is muted. <laughs> I was like, oh, I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> what's he doing? Uh, that follow you, you know. Uh, yeah. I would say I have like recurrent nightmares like uh somebody with post traumatic stress disorder or something like oh, that. Yeah. But once in a while they they they, they have come into consciousness and it, it flashbacks of it. That do occur because like with Sabrina with, with us with Beth you know um you know of course so, uh, certain aspects of that like kind of flash back to oh I remember doing that and like that was crazy and so like it does follow you and you know of course that happened what 45 years ago and I bet it's, yeah. it's still <laughs> You know, that just shows you the longevity it well, follows it shows my it just shows my longevity doesn't it yeah <laughs> <laughs> So it's interesting you say that because everybody that I respect that does that handles negative cases and does this side of it, because I want no part of it. I've said that from day one. Right. I have a lot of respect for people that do it. But however, you have those that you respect more in the field, like you trust. You know what I mean? So like Sabrina, I trust you guys. I would trust. Right. So for. And like, and then you hear all these people that are just like paranormal enthusiasts where they're like, oh, I would love to see something like that. Yeah. Right. <laughs> and I look at them because I hear and I, you know, I've I've been involved with handing cases off to, you know, when I was with SJGR and, you know, so, you know, they we had the SRT or whatever. I was like, handing stuff off. <laughs> I know, I know. Um, but I said it quickly. Um, but like being involved. So I look at them and I'm like. No, you don't. Mm -hmm. Now, I've never, I can't speak from experience, right? But with, with what Carl is saying, I can only imagine that some seeing something like that would totally change my entire outlook What's on that? life, on everything, on religion, on, you know what I mean? Because you hear it, but that's almost like it's like telling you like, yeah, mo yeah motherfucker, it exists. Like, mm -hmm. you know, it's, we're, it's there, you know? <laughs> yeah. It would totally be a life changer. Especially the skeptics, you know what I mean? I mean, not, and I understand and I, you know, I, I, I respect them for that. But um, when you go through something um, that is beyond something you've seen or even felt or the spiritual warfare in yourself with it, you, you can't, it's undeniable and it, it's very frustrating because it wasn't really for the skeptic to see, it was for the person who's dealing with the case or, or the client. And it's just like, the, it's very personal. And it, and it does change your life completely to the point where if you, if you were a faithful person to begin with, you just, just maximize that by a thousand, a million from right. seeing that or, or witnessing things like that, because yeah. it just it changes the whole, everything about life in general. You're right. Yeah. Yeah. For me, it's been a few yeah. years since I've dealt with the true demonic case, in my opinion. Some some people would go on cases with me uh, and some of the physical cases that I've done and done deliverances or blessings, and somebody would interpret that to be demonic because of, you know, there was some uh, malevolent nature to it. But it's been a few years for me for an actual true demonic case, and I think every day that I wake up that I'm not dealing with a demonic case because uh there are repercussions as sabrina knows and carl knows there are repercussions to these things you know you know i've dealt with cases where investigators are part of it and then they they split apart they, they're no longer friends because mm -hmm. uh, of, of the situations that you see the of course the attacks that the demonic will do before or after uh these cases are even during um so they're not fun they, they, they are uh, very, very hectic, and, and there you have to 
be very assertive in every detail you deal with because uh, you have to control the situation. If you don't, it can it, it can really really explode in your face and just become much worse. Well, it's stressful, you know. Yeah. And the stress comes in the element of the unexpected where you don't know what's going to happen yeah. next. And you're dealing with people. And you're dealing with like our our children. We we very much you know when we have the children in dealing with cases, um, you know that's that that weighs heavily on us to to make sure they're okay. But like uh, with Taryn, we'll 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 tell you when we were with the group. I mean, usually the first thing that would happen either I would have a dream or my daughter would wake up with a nightmare and then I would know a case is coming in. Something mm -hmm. always happens prior. No, no. And still to, I, I help a PCINJ and I have a few, like three cases and it's like automatically I'm like, Joanne, you know, blah, blah, blah. And she's like, well, a case just came in, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, well, there you go. You know, it's like you, you always get some kind of little bit of detail that something's go coming coming your way. It's like a little heads up. <laughs> However, do you think there was an uptick in this when the shows started? Hmm. Oh, that, the kind of, what, how our modern concept in the Western culture of a demon, which was ushered in with William Peter Blatty's novel, The Exorcist and the mm -hmm. movie in 1970, early 1974 that was released. That gave us an idea that, you know, Ouija boards are very dangerous and, you know, what a demon can do and how they're out to possess. It kind of renewed interest in mm -hmm. in demonology and demonic paranormal. And now that with the television shows, yeah, it seems like that's a common theme because when you say demon, people sit up and take notice mm -hmm. because they figure they're going to get action. They're going to see something. You know, of course, it's not a glamorous field, is it? <laughs> but, <laughs> no, I, I want no parts of it. And I, I have said yeah. that from the beginning. I think there was one there was one time that I honestly can say that, you know, now at the time I was with a group I'm not that was I say, I know. Yeah. That everything was that, right? So oh, yeah. I got to a point where I was like, okay, I'm sure. You know what I mean? Like I just stopped believing that there was that you know what I mean? Because it was everything. And I'm like, no, you just got a fucking flat tire. It has nothing to do with anything. You know yeah. what I mean? <laughs> got a flat tire. Yeah. So mm. while I was with this group or whatever, and it was, and like I said, I've always wanted nothing to do with it. I don't care if it was a pink issue type of a case. Like I wanted no parts. So one night um, I have this nightmare. I'm going to say it was a nightmare. And I was, um, in a house with a family and a little kid. And I was literally fighting a demon. And I saw this thing in front of me. He was huge. I, it was so detailed, right? I was literally fighting this thing. And it was like everything like you, when you grow up, you picture like, like this huge, big, tall, and he was green, not red. You know what I mean? But the horns, the eye, like everything was like, and I'm fighting this thing, right? And I beat it. I can and tell then, you who that is too. <laughs> and I beat it and I went on to the house next door and I was did the same thing. Like, and I was like, okay, I got to keep going. And I wake up and for three days I walked around. My entire body was so sore. Like every muscle in my body hurt. Even walking, my boobs hurt. Like everything hurt. Like for like three and a half days, like I like, been through a war. Somehow and, you moved out your dream on some level. I yeah, know. I mean, that was probably the craziest and the closest I've ever really felt to maybe that side of things. Like thinking, like you know, was that really something because of how detailed it was, how life like it felt? And then for three and a half days, I felt like, you know what I mean? Like that—that that, that was like the. You know, from fighting. We were, with a, we were with a group that, you know, was dealing with that. And even though, like I said, we were saying that even just the both sides, the SRT and, and the regular paranormal group side, those cases still coming in still affect the entire group. So you're going to get that kind of yeah. that, you know, that kind of backlash, mm -hmm. too, because you're part of that group. Yeah. Um, you know, so because everybody seemed to have an effect in some way or form 
whether they were doing negative cases or not, because of, you know, he was taking in all these cases and then we're getting plastered. We're hearing about it in the meetings. We're looking at the, you know, the uh, questionnaires and stuff. So, yeah, you know, I mean, any group too would have a, a kind of a side effect of that because basically we all open up that door uh, once we join a paranormal group whether it's a Casper case or not, you even, you know, like we do a, a preliminary, we think that it's like a, a green or a yellow case and all of a sudden shit hits the fan. We, we miss something and you're right. any one of any one of the um, group members could be you open that door faced in, in, no. in a negative case you open and that, not realize you're, you're, you were baptized Catholic. You open that door. If you're a Catholic, you open that door right from the birth when you're born. Yep. Yeah. You, you open that door. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Well, you don't even have so to I had to Catholic throw to some humor demons, in there. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. now that's the point. The Catholics, you would think any, you know, anyone raised an educated Catholic. By the way, what are you drinking there, Anthony? It looks, it looks yummy. It's whiskey. Walking Dead. I didn't, I didn't bring my whiskey because I thought it would make me sleepy because we had a substantial dinner together. But I, now I wish I had brought it. Oh, <laughs> I wish I had brought that because it's the same color. Yeah, I actually it's a brandy. And uh, I would, I would just love to be sipping that with soda. Right now. Oh, um, <laughs> but he doesn't drink with me because he knows I don't drink. So he's, he's. I'm being considerate. He's yeah. considerate. So oh, I think raised Catholic, uh, isn't that inculcated to you from in your religious training from the beginning that you a belief in wicked spirits? Aren't you supposed to believe in demons? But James can comment. Uh, that yeah definitely and i just want to quickly touch upon karen's nightmare story you know i don't really get a lot of impressions. i want to hear more about it eventually. i don't really get a lot of impressions through dreams or uh through my sleep at all you know but in the time that i deal dealt with the true demonic case is that i dealt dealt with the nightmare that i talk about frequently um because the nightmare yes that was a hell you know, that's the, it was you know that night, yeah. king of nightmares <laughs> So I, I was in the preliminary stages. I had never met this family, never seen pictures of them, but never seen their house. The only thing that I had asked is what you're dealing with, uh, what's going on, like within my questionnaire forms, have, do you do drugs, do you drink heavy alcohol? So certain questions like this, I knew there was a family. I knew how many people were there. Like I said, never physically been there, never physically seen these individuals. But I had a nightmare within the week that I was supposed to go there. And this nightmare was so prolific where um, I traveled to this house to go do uh, what I was going to go do. I saw what the house looked like. I seen what every single member of the family looked like. And instead of going and helping them in this nightmare, I went and, sit and killed every single one of them very brutally. Wow. And the craziest thing about that nightmare is I went to this house. The house was the same from my nightmare. The family members were a spitting image. Oh my God. Every single family member that I'd never seen in my life was physically the same way they were in my nightmare. But oh, wow. the difference is I didn't kill them. Oh my but God. I never had that happen once where I had a dream I was in the ha same house from the dream, and that freaked me out. Mm -hmm. I didn't know what to do. I mean, it, the people didn't look, it was the house itself that was the same mm -hmm. in the dream. It's, it's freaky. And to, get, and to get to the question about um, demons and Catholics, yeah. you'd actually be surprised, and especially being Catholic clergy, you'd be surprised at how many priests don't actually uh, fathom that idea of demons. They think that no, if you have possession, you are psychologically sick, you need to go get an assessment. <laughs> They're psychologically sick. Well, that is interesting no. because they, because Rome, I mean, I feel like I, I heard within the last 10 years, the Pope... Mm -hmm you know, initiated um, the teachings of, of exorcisms again or something like that. I feel it was like it's been within the last 10 years. So with with that happening, I mean, I mean, how more Catholic can you get? That's you know? uh, that's 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 in Rome and that's in Europe. You got to remember that um, there are so many exorcists over in Europe mm -hmm. compared to America. Yeah, but I mean, like, <laughs> it's like, it's like, it's like there's like legitimately 10 exorcists in America, if, if, if that, that could be quantified by the Catholic Church as exorcists. Modified exorcists. Yeah. But then you get to, especially Italy. Oh, uh, Italy is really massive with them. Like they do exorcisms yeah. every day there, to, to be honest with you. But that's little meatball women coming through, you know, trying to get an exorcism. Yeah. Did you ever see 
see some of them stuff. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah, but I thought like oh, it's probably going to sound like I watched too many movies. Yeah. Right now, but I I seriously thought it was true that like the anybody that who is in the Catholic Church some way shape or form they have to get like approval from higher up or something like that. You know, is that, is that not true? You have to, you have to be an exorcist to usually do an exorcism, but they do allow certain priests with permission through the diocese, diocese and bishop to get approval to do so. Um, and if you don't get that approval, there is a good chance that you could get serious of trouble or excommunicated. Um, not to say anything bad about this person because I love this man, but a prime example is a lot of people seen this man on television. Father Bob Bailey was a Roman Catholic priest, still is a Roman Catholic priest, but he got in trouble eventually because he didn't claim to be an exorcist, but he was titled or notified to be as an exorcist uh, on these shows, and it got back to the di diocese, and uh, they, they, he, he's no longer allowed to do shows anymore. He, and he's very quiet because of that nature. They take it very seriously. It's okay. it's not like everybody's an exorcist. There is specific training for it. There is specific guidance um, for it. And, and even though anybody that is clergy technically can do an exorcism as it is a sacramental, it's not a sacrament, it's a sacramental. So like as blessing holy water, I can do that as a deacon. Yes, you I can do a performed sacramental of exorcism, but... Of course, that requires a you know necessary things with the ritualist Romanus uh, within the right of the solemn rite of exorcism. Mass is performed, so I technically could perform an exorcism. Well, but then, question for you, young man. But then perform a deacon's mass as long as I have the uh, blessed host already. As long as the host has been blessed already, um, I can perform an exorcism. But of course, I'm not going to do so without permission. That's only an yeah. emergency situation, but most likely would never happen. Well, Father Bailey, of course, he was doing this for, he was quite mm -hmm. aware that there was a television camera following mm -hmm. him around. So it looked like exploitation and, you know, that he was being an entertainer at that point. Mm -hmm. I personally felt he should have known better than he should not have ventured there, you know, because he knew he was part of a television show. And he had to expect to get sanctioned from that. Yeah, but he was sanctioned in a lot of those situations. But the problem is, is when you put, and this is why I've really never been on camera. I think I appeared five seconds on your Finding Big, Bigfoot episode. <laughs> but the, the thing is, though, is I've always stayed away from it. Like everybody's always said, James, when especially being young doing this, James is always only in it for being famous. I have a career that pays half more, more than half these celebrities make in real life. So it's not like I'm in it for fame. It, 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 in reality, I'm in it for another reason. But it's like, it's like, uh, it's so crazy, bewildering to me. But he got sanctioned. But the thing is, is when you put yourself on camera, there are other people that control who you are, aka yeah. producers. And these people were like a, a prime example. Um, Jeff Leeper. Um, Jeff Leeper is not an exorcist. He's a great man. I really respect him, and he's very knowledgeable. But he's not an exorcist. But he was on Ghost of Sher um, Ghost of Shepherdstown, and on the last episode, he was claimed to be an exorcist. People got mad at that because, but that wasn't his fault. He he didn't. Say, I'm an exorcist, but the producers inclined to note him as an exorcist on that yeah. program. Editing can do a lot. I know from experience yeah. you know, what so, editing can do. Yeah. Adam <laughs> Bly. I haven't heard from Adam Bly. He was, he's part of the uh, roaming. No, he's not. Not anymore. So no? Adam, no. Adam Bly, from what I last understand from, uh, um, um, from, um, uh, what is it? A ca a Catholic, um, she talks to God. I forget the name for it off the top of my head. She 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 is used by um, the Catholic Church because she has a connection to God. She has abilities, but her ability is that she talks to God. I forgot the name, technical term. Sounds like saint. Uh, no, not saint, but there's a technical term for it. I, it's bewildering me right now. But um, the last time I talked to her, her name's Sonia. Sa Sonia Braz. Um, and she told me that Adam Bly has been – and. I, I would take this for a grain of salt, but I'm pretty sure it's yeah. true that Adam Bly was actually removed from anything to do with the Roman Catholic Church because he lied about his psychology credentials. Oh. 
And I think that's legitimate. So, but don't quote me on that. So if Adam, no, no. Listening, please don't sue me, but that's yeah. Kind of yeah, I'm very saddened. Don't sue. saddened by that. If that's true. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I, I thought, I thought Adam Blatt was a leading specialist. He was teaching priest demonology and he's a lay person, but uh -huh. uh, Sonia deals with the um, Eastern Orthodox. She deals with Roman Catholic church, the traditional church. She she's uh, primarily used by a lot of exorcist and priests and such as like Father Chad Ripperger. Um, I even believe she worked with a more father of Morth at one point before his death. So I would take her word that mm -hmm. that, that was the case in scenario. And it's crazy to think that was a possibility. Yeah, no, for sure. Mm -hmm. um, I was going to ask you, I was like, oh my gosh, what the hell I just had in my head? And then you started, oh man, I hate when I do this. Oh. You want to get back to us then? <laughs> yeah. Back to us in that. <laughs> I do. Uh, someday, Tyron, I'll ask you more about that nightmare because. Uh, yeah. Well, I uh, it's interesting because I, I really, I think I probably told maybe two people. About that, and I just I think it was last time. To the last yes. time. Yeah. You mentioned it, yeah. you mentioned it last time here, yeah. So, yeah, it's not something that I do talk no, about. I, I don't enjoy talking about it, even, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah for sure. I, I refuse to tell them, and it's too bad. The dream, I, I would have to spell spill out some people's names, and I don't, yes, yeah, so, no, it's a sensitivity issue, you know. those dreams. <laughs> Taryn. Oh yeah, for sure. I mean, uh, it was they were so bad. I had to go to uh, her doctor. She she had to take care of me. They were, you know, it's just when you're in that, it sucks. Uh -huh. Yeah, but luckily, there's people like you guys that do get into it, mm -hmm. and then me over here, we I don't just think do it, do <laughs> and Casper, you and you know. Well. Slimer, you know, like that. <laughs> the thing is, you want us to come over. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh, I was going to ask you. All the cold cuts and everything. If You know, whatever you want to set out is okay. Cookies, pastries. I want the full Italian spread. I don't know what he's all talking right, about. Yeah, okay. <laughs> oh, yeah, I want meatballs. I want sausage. I want salami. All right, so really quick because you guys got another show to get on to. Yeah, we got booze and booze now. We got booze and booze and like we got shows to go. Um, so really quick, uh, you know, you guys will be on. Where are you guys going to be at? Anything fun and exciting? You know, yeah. website, contact. Well, we got a few engagements coming up in uh, October still and in November, and we will be at Wilson Castle this uh, this Saturday, and it's already sold out. Yeah. You know, well, no, there's 11 tickets. If you're listening, oh, there's 11 general tickets left. That's one that still has 11 tickets? 11 tickets. Yeah. We'd like you to come. Yeah. That is, that's held by Warner Paranormal and Jason Baker Photography. Yes. Um, there is an event link on our website, demonology.org, D E M O N O L O G Y. Spelled the same org. way. Yeah. They're very easy to find us if you want. Demonology.org is our website. Yeah. And then uh, as far as uh, uh, tonight, we're going to be on Boo and Boo's uh, podcast. It can be found on the Demonology's page. It can also be found on my personal page and I believe Carl's. Yes. But our big, next big event for Duo Demonology is. Um, December was well, December twelfth. It's it is de uh, check the halls. It is three <laughs> locations: the Witchin and Mass, huh. it is, uh, the Isaac Morehouse. It is the uh, uh, Murdoch Whitney and Whitney. the First Congregational Church in Witchin and Mass. Three locations Which for the price nice. of one. Um, and we got it from six a.m. to to midnight. I mean six a.m. six p.m. to midnight, and um, you know those those are on sale right now. Six a.m. Oh god, yeah, it'd be fun though, this, right? Yeah. Well, we have three locations, man. I don't know how we're gonna fit all of them in six hours. That's crazy! Wow. Well, yeah. You folks have been... to come to the Conjuring House in Harris Silver. You've seen the movie. Sabrina has. Been. Sabrina has been there. Yeah. Definitely yeah, see. I'm only allowed to go to states that um, are not on the quarantine list for New Jersey. So. No man you know. left. Work, yeah. so you know, work, work forbids it. 
Well, I can go, but I just might not have a job when I get back. That's all. Um, well, <laughs> so, you can receive visitors, though. But you know, yeah, you, you receive. Can't, you can't bring the Conjuring House to you. <laughs> yeah, that'd be awesome. We can smuggle you in. You know, <laughs> you can kidnap me. I don't know where I'm going. Yeah, that's the story in itself. <laughs> oh, yeah. So, just, yeah, you could just kidnap me, and I don't know where I'm going. So there you go. I I, I went against my will. <laughs> there you go. You're possessed. You're possessed. You're possessed. Yes, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Um. So. I know we didn't discuss it, but, and I know you guys got to go, but James, we have to, and Carl, we have to, our next month's date, we have to get that down. Um, Cause, and then, but thank you so much for coming on. So you guys are as always amazing and awesome. And I love, 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 love our talks. We'll be having a Thanksgiving yeah. edition. <laughs> well, yeah. yeah, you yeah. Up as a turkey. No, you won't. <laughs> I'm your turkey. Will you really? <laughs> Yeah, you we're just going to talk. All right. In between shows, we will. All right, guys, thank you for having us on, and we look forward to next month. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you, everybody, for joining us. We'll be in touch with you. All right. Love you guys. Bye. 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 Next show. All right. Let me. Bye, everybody. Thanks for joining us. We'll be on next week. Hmm? Yay. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah. well, this weekend I'm going to go live at Penhurst. Um, right. So this weekend at Penhurst, yeah. uh, I'm doing it overnight. I'm working the overnight investigations Friday and Saturday night, and I'm going to go live on Paranormal Brews page. So you guys can check that out. Mm -hmm. But thank you, everybody. And um, I'm sorry if I say your name wrong. Uh, cool is. Um, I'm just going to put it up so I can say. Yeah, thanks thanks for helping us out. That, yeah. that's, yeah. That would be my approach. We, we, I, I'm, I'm an aspiring mystic. We're both spiritual people. That's what I would say too. I would say it's exactly what you said to help out. You don't necessarily need to see a priest for the exorcism, but to just yeah. apply what you said. Yeah. For attacking. Yeah. So I, yeah, yeah. I want to thank her for helping that one lady, but then she uh, said that she sees my grandmother with me. So she, so that was like nice yeah. to hear. So thank you guys for joining us and uh, we will be back next week. Love you guys. Bye -bye. See you later. Bye-bye.